Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge. And I'm Ashley Sledge. And let's talk horror. Now, today we are joined by two amazing, amazing people. We are joined by Bill and Justin of the new film Sleep, Walk, Kill. Uh, let's start with you, Bill. How you doing today, brother? Hey, I'm doing great. It's a it's an unseasonably warm day here in Chicago, so I've got a, a lot to be happy about. Yeah, here for in sure. Detroit too. I know. I'm like, I will take this because I don't want the cold weather. I hate it. Yeah, thanks, hate global it. warming. Yeah. Um. <laughs> so, Bill is one of the lead actors of the film, and down here we have Justin Miller, who is the writer director of the film. Bill or Justin, how are you doing today? Oh. Um. Great. Uh, you guys are taking me out uh, for a little break from my nine to five, so I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Yeah. That's what we're known for, for taking people away from reality. Yeah, so we, we're, 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 yeah exactly. I mean, I am staring right at it right now, but, uh, but yeah, but I appreciate it. At least, it, yeah. there, right? So, right. At least yeah. I'm not in there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the good thing about this film, guys, is it is available now, and you guys can watch it by clicking the links down in the description. But before you do that, I also have all of Bill's and all of Justin's social media links right here in the description as well. So you can follow them to stay up to date on what happens with Sleep, Walk, Kill, but also to see what projects they have coming up. Because I promise you, this is not the only time you are going to hear their name. So, uh, Bill, my first question is actually for you. Um, how did you get it connected with the film? Well, uh, I, like many uh, people that are in the movie, w was contacted because of the comedy that I was doing in Philly. I used to live back on the, the East Coast. And when this, uh, I guess when Justin completed the script, he had Samantha Russell, who plays my ex-wife Addie in the movie. He kind of uh, put it in her ear to like keep an eye out for somebody that might be good for the role of Edgar. And she came and saw me in a fringe play that my friend Jack wrote. And uh, I guess I, I did decent enough there that everybody thought like, oh, he could, he could probably be in the movie. And, uh, right. and I'm really, really super grateful to Samantha for, for thinking of me that way, because it was a, uh, such a good experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the fact that Samantha saw you on stage and was like, you know what? I could divorce that guy. <laughs> 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 I yeah. want to be his ex-wife. And when I look at that guy, all I see is alimony. Let's make this. Yeah. Happen. I mean, she pretty much knew right after that night too. So, so right. she, it she was just like, knew it. Yeah. She knew it yeah, from her exactly. sight that she wanted to be your ex-wife. <laughs> it was divorce at first sight, Bill. You know? I owe her so, a lot, and I owe her some alimony, too, I'm sure. Right, I'm sure. <laughs> um, Justin, how about you? What was the inspiration that you had for this film? Um, so I've always been really fascinated with, like, sleep and dreams, like, even trying to, like, Good. stay up for, like, multiple days. <laughs> That's the opposite, but, like, uh, and, like, um, lucid dreaming. Like, I used to, like, read books on lucid dreaming and try to, like, you know, get myself, uh, it didn't really work because you would, like, you would realize you were dreaming and then you would get so excited that you would wake up. You'd be like, I'm dreaming, and then be like, like, I can do whatever I want, and then your eyes pop open and, and you're awake. Uh, so, but, like, really fascinated with that and, you know, and, and, and horror, and I just, and I, this idea came to me and I just, I just had to write it, so, yeah. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, I love what I love about this is it does have the horror elements mm -hmm. to it, but I would liken this, and I'm not saying this because of the plot, but I'm saying there are different similarities from what we were able to see between this and Shaun of the Dead. Um, I feel like some of the camaraderie between our main characters is very Shaun of the Dead esque. Yeah, and absolutely. Um, I mean that with the highest praise. Shaun of the Dead is my favorite horror comedy of all time, so that's not something oh. I say lightly. But the, yeah. the camaraderie that you guys had, is that something that carried over onto set? Was this like one of those things where you guys were constantly laughing and having fun even between takes? Oh, totally. Oh, my goodness. Pretty much. So like I was saying. Pretty much it's like we couldn't even shoot most of the time because we were just having such a good time. You know, so, yeah. Constantly. Yeah, literally all the time. That makes it easier to film like yeah. when, right. you know, you have friends and you can joke and, yeah, that's awesome. Big time. And there's a lot of realistic stuff that happens in this movie. Like Ashley and I have been married for 17 years. So you definitely have to wait till Tuesday for sex. Like you have to put that in the book. I you love have that. to make <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. Um, like there's, you have to pull your calendar out and mark it down Tuesday sex day. Like definitely something, something that you need to plan out nowadays, you know, yeah. after 17 years. I've been married uh 14 years, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, 
and nice uh, yeah, yeah. No schedule, just no sex either. But no, no. Right. No, no schedule. Well, that's what I've always said. Like you know, you have your friends that are like, "Hey, man, if you were in a horror film, which one would you pick?" And I'm like, "It follows. I ain't banging nobody. I'm safe. I'm gonna live." <laughs> <laughs> yes, mate. <Yeah. laughs> so, um, what was the? So there's always ups and downs of every movie. Um, can you guys talk about some ups and some downs that you you went through during filming? The, the ups were definitely that, that camaraderie uh, that you touched on. Uh, we were lucky enough, a lot of the folks uh, that worked on the movie, we already knew each other from doing uh, doing sketch and improv comedy in, in Philadelphia. And then we had like the legendary Wid who plays uh, Uncle Pat in the movie. I don't know if you know this, that guy's certified. He was a, he's a, a, prop, a prop comic. Um, okay. and back in the, back in like the eighties, he had tons of TV exposure and stuff. So Wid, Wid is like a, a, there, there's comedy in, in that guy's blood and that, uh, mm. he was always, he, he was just a crack up on set and everybody had a really, uh, had a really nice time. Uh, it's for me, as a, yes, yes. Uh, for me as a tall person, the only low of making this movie was that Justin <laughs> basement is a little bit shorter than or I, I guess the ceiling's a little bit shorter than i would need for a fully extended headroom i was constantly ducking uh but hey those are the sacrifices that we make for the uh to, right. <laughs> to filmmaking dreams <laughs> so what about you just what were some of the ups and downs for you yeah so i mean like you said i mean just a lot of fun on set um Besides maybe two nights where, like, we couldn't get a prop bat to break. And it literally took, like, four hours. Um, but, uh, <laughs> you know, this was shot in my house. This was shot in my house. I have a family. Uh, that's a terrible idea. That's just yeah. the worst idea that anyone could ever have. I'm, I'm literally still kicking myself. Uh, like, I had to make it look like a bachelor place. Mm -hmm. And we, I had to take everything off the walls. Uh, you know, I had to remove all my daughter's stuff and my wife's stuff. I had to, like, box it up and move it to the basement. I literally had to take everything from one side of the basement to the other and back and forth. Uh, and then I had to kick them out when we were shooting. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, hey, guys, can you spend all of Saturday and Sunday just, like, somewhere else? Thank you. Yeah. I'm sure so, my wife is thrilled. Yeah. Oh, she just loved every second of that. Yeah. Yeah. Like. When we had to like, I think we shot like two extra days, and 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 she was like, "Are you are you done? Are you are you, are you done yet? You, you know, like is that it? Is that it? Is that the final? You know, like and so, right. so yeah, it was uh, <laughs> exactly. Uh, we still haven't hung up the stuff that was on the walls. It's somewhere uh, in the basement, I think. But we'll we get may there have one day. Reshoots, babe. Right. We may have to. Reshoots. <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Better safe yeah. than sorry. Um. So another thing that I, you know, I just made our, we made our first film not that long ago. And when you finally do take that step and you're able to see everything that goes on behind the scenes, um, you really start to appreciate things that you never did before. And something I really appreciated in this film was the use of color saturation. Mm -hmm. So um, was that something, Justin, from the beginning that you knew that you wanted to mess with the color a little bit here and there? Or was that something like during the editing process where you were kind of playing games and seeing what was happening? Yeah, doing the editing process definitely. Like, um, you know, I would I would try different things and see what I liked. You know, kind of uh, like bluey, bluish and up and oh, you haven't seen the end yet, but the end, um, uh, it, it kind of goes to yellowish. Uh, but um, but definitely something that I played with like for a while. Um, tried to find the right uh right color and um, you know, and and I think it works. You know, but um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, it looks really good. Yeah, that, that's one of the first things we noticed when we started watching the film. Another was... thing that I noticed was the score. Like, I think the score is really good. So is that something that you kind of already knew, um, you already had planned out for, for the movie? So I, I don't know if I should, like, admit it, but, like, the score was actually done on a keyboard. Um, not, like, a music keyboard, but a computer keyboard okay. uh, in GarageBand. Uh, so I was just, like... A A B A A B, you know, like uh, uh, so I spent a lot of time doing that. Yeah, and I did kind of know what I what I wanted, but uh, I didn't know that that is how I was gonna achieve it. Um, like I had tried a few other things, and that kind of just.
has worked for me watching the footage and 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 playing around like that so mm -hmm. so yeah so before we get into the realization of what happened here um bill the day of filming when you guys heard the noise what was that day of filming like for you? Is that something that you guys really, because it, it looks like you're all outside. Mm -hmm. You know, is that something that you guys played through like a loudspeaker or was that something where use your imagination and we'll do it in post? No, I had that. I had to do some acting uh, that day because there was a, <laughs> it was just pretend there's a noise and, uh, and we did. And that Here was fun because that, that was one of the day we got the neighbors involved. And so it, it was cool. Like, you know, the cast and crew deserves a bulk of the credit, but there were, there were folks that just lived on that street that were like, dude, we'll do anything to help this movie happen. It was a real community effort. And that, that scene in particular where we get like kind of zoom out and see a couple houses in a row of people, people yeah. standing ne next to each other. Those are all neighbors of Justin's that were just like kind enough to be like, yeah, I'll be, I'll be involved with the heck. Yeah. yeah. Actually no, one thing. No, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, I mean, if I can riff on that, I mean, my 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 neighbors were amazing. Like, they literally would order us pizza, uh, and, like order us food, and I and like just just be quiet. Like, if I was like, "Hey, we're out here," they would be like, "Okay, we're gonna stop mowing our lawn now and go inside because you're making a movie, and we like appreciate that." So, yeah. shout out to them; they were amazing. Yeah. Really great. Well, if you guys haven't seen the movie yet, here's my reminder: it is down in the description. I can't tell you much about the noise. But what I can tell you is it's not the ice cream truck, even though it's, <laughs> it's not the ice cream truck. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another thing I wanted to talk about real quick, I'm going to make the best segue of all time, going from the ice cream truck to the freezer. Um, when we kind of oh, get fun. the lowdown on what's happening here, you have the best knockout scene of all time with the freezer. And there's actually a lot of yeah. physical... I don't want to say physical comedy in this because this is really a heavy scene that's happening. Yeah. But it really is almost... Um, Ash Williams, Evil Dead style slapsticky, and I, again, I mean that with the most respect because that's something. No, that I'll that you, you couldn't pay me a, a higher compliment. I, I really, really appreciate hearing that because, uh, I mean, Evil Dead Two is the movie that made me be like, oh, okay, that's. I guess that's what I'll do for the rest of my life if yeah. I can. Mm -hmm. And uh, and yeah, you're right. There was a lot of, especially as the movie progresses, Ed Edgar gets beat up more and more, and I like. I remember some nights be, getting getting home, being like, Am I, God, the, "Pro wrestlers can't be this <laughs> bruised and swollen." <laughs> like, oh. It was not. I, I let my and I I loved it. I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. I, I wore those battle scars really proudly because there was a lot of uh, really fun physical stuff, just slipping and falling uh, in blood, and that you you write that uh that kung fu scene. Uh, there's a lot of like really, really fun, you know, there, there weren't too many days though. where it was like, we're just going to sit and talk. Right. Yeah. That pratfall, man, you just kept doing that over and over and over and <laughs> over. And everybody when first, when we first go into the neighbor's house, is that what you're talking about? Yeah. When yeah. Yes. In, you do the blood slip. Yeah. And he yes. kept trying to get higher and he came in with a giant, uh, swollen arm. The next day, remember, man? Like, oh my goodness! Like, it she was. Yeah. Goes. Did you see how hard he hit? <laughs> <laughs> and that was like, actually. That looked like it hurt. <laughs> that was actually like the lightest one because I realized, and in, in post production, that the camo shook so hard on mm. some of the other shots. So I kind of had to use the. Sorry, Bill. I kind of had to use the one where you didn't get hurt. You know, I, like, uh, I had to use the first one, right. Bill. So the thirty-five <laughs> extra were actually unnecessary. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of the best nights of my life because I'll tell you what I this was my first uh movie acting in the star and role you know church and I had I, most of my acting that I'd done had been on stage in like comedy short comedy sketches nothing nothing where I needed to be serious so I had some some insecurities going into this and when I saw that scene coming I was like you know what is something I know I can do sure. is fall down real hard so I was I was super excited uh, for that scene and I was I was happy I felt like I was delivering what I was supposed to in that scene where some of the more dramatic stuff I was like oh, I don't know how I feel I think it came luckily Justin was able to edit so I look great but uh the the pratfall stuff I was like 
this is what I'm confident in uh, in making this movie. I could definitely <laughs> fall and fa- bust my ass. It. Yeah, you you're nailed. Fa- Thank you so much. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's all I ever wanted to hear. <laughs> Um, and I, I mean this genuinely. I think that horror and comedy are probably the most closely knit of the oh, genres. Yeah. You definitely have Absolutely. to have horror. Absolutely. Like, you have to have that comic relief. Absolutely. And it's all about timing. Yeah. You know, if you tell your joke and it's got the wrong timing, you're not going to get the laughs. If you try to get your right. scares mm-hmm. and you don't have the right timing, you're not. it's not going to be successful. Mm-hmm. So that's why I feel like you look at the guys like Danny McBride that just did the Halloween new trilogy and you look at Jordan Peele. Yeah. These guys are known for their comedy. But when it comes to horror, they know that it's all about timing. What can we do to make yep. the timing right? So I feel like your comedians can make great dramatic or horror actors because Absolutely. you know about timing. So take that confidence and keep running with it, man, because you guys did a great job mm-hmm. in this film. And this is something that um, we love to watch indie horror. I think that especially since the pandemic, we've all learned that indie horror is some of the most hardworking people in mm-hmm. the business. Um, it kept us going. And it's very hard especially in today's age mm-hmm. where you have 15 different streaming services that are releasing something new all the time to go out there and actually say, you know what? I fucking did it. Yeah. I did this and I made it happen. And your cast and crew, you did that. So no matter what ever happens, no one can ever take away. You guys made a fucking film. Right. And, and we know from experience how difficult that is. It's hard. And there yeah. are days where it's you're like, freaking out. Yeah. yeah, there are days where you're like, you know what? I'm going to go back in the basement and get my stupid daughter's drawing and put it back on the fridge. I'm done today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, exactly. So yeah. Let's just take um, a minute well, of silence, of silence for Princess Pickles. For uh, Princess Pickles. Oh, man. I, Thank I goodness know. all dogs go to heaven, you know? Gone but not uh, an- another part of that, Phil, another part of this that made me laugh is when you're like, is it him upstairs? He took the love of my life, and she's like, "He didn't take me." Like, I wasn't talking to you. (laughs) (laughs) Love that. That's what I'm talking about. Like, you have to have that timing, and something that worked in this film was the timing. Mm -hmm. It's something that we appreciated very, very much, and we talked about it before we started recording. But when we're talking about comedy landing, we're going to talk about one more comedic thing before we talk about probably one of the scariest things that I can think of. there's a news broadcast happening and the the tagline on the news broadcast is a message of hope, even though you'll probably die. <laughs> and that to me is one of the most, I want that on a t-shirt. Like, I mean, I, how funny is that? Like that's real news right there. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, I was like, should I be this stuff aware? Yes, I think I will. Yes, you know, you like, yes. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. If you guys Thank ever you. make shirts for the film, please just have sleepwalk kill on the front and on the back. A message of hope, even though you'll probably die. I'll probably buy it. Take my, take my yeah. <laughs> so when you went into this, um, obviously, Bill, you knew that you were coming in to a comedic horror film, and you were really comfortable with the comedic aspects of this film. Now, Justin, when you were writing this, did you go into this saying, "I want to write a comedic horror film," or was it something where you were like, "You know what? I want to write a horror film, and come what may," and it turned out to be more of a horror comedy. Yeah, so, I mean, I was definitely going into it, like, I wanted to write a horror film with comedic elements to it, you know, so, and it just turned out to be, yeah, like a horror comedy. Um, I don't think I can write anything without adding a little sarcasm and comedy to it, so, um, and then the cast just, like, amplified that, you know, they were just, like, amazing, you know, Uh, Sam Russell, um, she's a brilliant comedian. Um, on the director of like my sketch team, she did an amazing, amazing job casting the film. Um, so yeah, definitely, uh, definitely intentional. The, uh, the comedic element. Yeah, I think that's super huge. Mm-hmm. The fact that when you come in, like someone and Bill, I'm not trying to put you down at all, but you come in knowing that you're looking at a horror comedy, you kind of know what to prepare for, but in the writing totally. process, you know, when you're trying to, you know, gauge what you're doing, because you've already seen Bill in your head as you're putting this down to paper before Bill's even come into the audition room. Mm-hmm. So to try to find that right person, was there anybody else that you even considered or was Bill the guy right from the start? Um, I think there was just a, like a few comedians that, you know, their names got thrown out. But then, um, you know, uh, when after Samantha saw the play with Bill in it, she was like, that's the guy. That's the guy that we want. Uh, I was Matthew totally Smith waiting was for you to be like, I was waiting for you to be like, yeah, we had a couple names out there, but they didn't call us back. So, uh, <laughs> actually, actually, a few of them are in my next film. The few names that got thrown out there. So, you know, uh, I gotta love a, yeah, I gotta love the Philly com- comedy scene. You know, yeah, that's 
that's awesome. Is, did you guys film in Philadelphia? Uh, yeah, in, in yard, right, outside, right outside, yeah, in Yardley, uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I want to yeah, know like all those. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I just like all those shots, like of the 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 river and stuff. That's like that is my backyard, pretty much. Uh, that's so like we didn't even travel. We just like walked to the field and you know, set up a drone, and then uh, yeah, and got those shots. So yeah. Yeah, the, I those shots were very beautiful. Yeah. Um, I do want to talk about something that I think is super smart. Um, we're gonna have a mini spoiler alert here. Yeah. Um, so okay. I don't know how much this plays into the film. But this is just from what we were able to see. This is just a mini spoiler. Uh, we're not going to go too in depth about this, out yeah. of respect for these guys and the hard work that them and the production and the crew put into the film. We want you to watch the full film. We want you to watch it to understand what we're saying. But this is something we're very curious about, and we're very open people. So we would like to get the answer while we're on air. So I like the sleeping fetus. You know, you don't oh, you don't always think about you know a fetus sleeping and it being able to tear you apart or whatever. You know, so I think yeah. that was super smart and. Um, yeah, if, if you want to elaborate on that a little bit. Really <laughs> sleep, you know? But, uh, but, um, what? Uh, hello? Connectivity issue you're with you, now. Justin. Yeah, we, we lost you. Yeah, you're back now. Oh, I'm back. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, like I, I definitely know that a, a fetus can sleep because I, you know, made sure that I did before I wrote it. But yeah, I just, I just <laughs> honestly thought it was ridiculous that like a little fetus is trying to kill, kill the mother. I mean, it wasn't like a yeah. I mean, I just thought that that was uh, that was really uh, something that uh, you know, if 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 any person sleeps becomes a, a right. whatever a, a maniac. Then that goes for uh, for infants as well. So yeah, totally. And you, you, like I said, you have a brilliant way of snapping out of this scene that we were able to see. But um, like we we always look at things through a realistic scope. You know, um, even if it's a a ginger doll coming to kill everybody, you always have to look at something through a realistic scope. And people get upset when even the grass is mowed in the walking dead yeah. you know people get upset about that there's no <laughs> everywhere, totally. there's someone's out there mowing the grass what's going on but i love in this movie like how you have these moments that are like that where um some some person doesn't think they're strong enough to be able to survive in this world with some of the things they've done um you know what would happen if a fetus inside falls asleep and which we know happened, so like, Which, and who, who or, else would think or, of that, you know? Right, yeah, I mean, you gotta consider, you gotta consider the world that, oh. uh, that you're putting these characters in, right, you know? So, yeah, for right. sure. Absolutely, yeah. And we, I was, we've also learned that it's very hard when a person dies to close their eyes. <laughs> oh, I felt so bad poking Ashley in oh. her eyeballs. Oh, like that. yeah, but she did a great job. She was a real champ that night. Oh, and it was what, like, oh, 40 degrees out, 30, 30 degrees outside, and she was outside, and uh, she was a well, that real champ she was that so night. Good. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Exactly. No makeup, just, uh, just, just you know, cold. just all natural. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just a freezing right. cold. <laughs> so a another thing about this movie, we, uh, again, in the interest of being completely transparent, as Ashley and I are, we didn't get to finish the film, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of a blessing because I have a big fucking mouth. And I spoil everything, <laughs> but I'm very excited to see how yeah, this film ends. we really want to finish it. I was very intrigued, um, and I really had fun with it. And you guys can start oh, you. middle and finish the film by clicking the link down in the description. But you can also follow these gentlemen on their social media accounts. Like I said, so you can stay up to date on what they have coming up in the future. Justin already told us he's working on the next film with the people that weren't cool enough to get Bill's role. <laughs> so <laughs> other things out there. <laughs> Bill's in Chicago now, man. So he, he, maybe oh. I can give him a Skype roll. You know? Right. There well, you see, go. see, if, if the people that are watching the next movie ever watch this, Bill would have taken your job if he was still here. I mean, I'm not <laughs> <laughs> if he wasn't in Chicago, sorry, Matt. 
<laughs> I'm totally joking, man. I'm very interested to see what you guys have it coming up here in the future. And I know that things, especially in the beginning of the processes with NDAs and stuff like that can be kind of tricky, but uh, Bill, do you have anything coming up here in the near future that you can talk to us about that you're working on? Yeah, right now I'm just trying my best to get a, a sketch comedy team up off the ground here in Chicago. Uh, having, having some success putting our own little independent shows on, trying to get maybe uh, noticed by a theater that would be kind enough to produce our, uh, our sketch shows. Other than that, uh, I've been writing my own horror script, so maybe Justin can star in that and we can flip roles. Um, but I, I'll, I do owe him a lot because I learned that even though it's hard work, to make a movie, it's possible. We did it. We put the work there. You know, we we got we drove to Yardley, put the work in, and it's possible. And that that really uh opened my eyes in a in a in a new way to be like, oh, maybe maybe I don't have to sit around and wait for somebody to tell me now it's time for you to do this. So I've uh, I'm trying to take take that ball and, and and run with it and write my own uh untitled as of yet slasher movie. Awesome, man. Yeah, yeah I couldn't be in it, man. I don't have your charisma. <laughs> Still, if it's talking about a guy coming down the stairs and a woman on the couch in her bra, I'm interested. <laughs> Dude, let me let me let me tell you what so i i committed to being somebody who wanted me to be in a horror movie i'm in i'm good let's do it before i even read the so then i open the the pdf uh or it might have been a printed copy i forget and i see the first page i'm like ah i want to have a rough time showing this one to my mom <laughs> uh but then it's good and i was like ah, what's the tone what's going on and then by the time it got to the the fetus stuff you were talking about uh, earlier, I understood that this is a movie with uh, ideas, and uh, yeah. and that that's what kept me, you know, interested the whole time. And be like, okay, there is this is a, it's not just exploitation. There's a lot of thought behind this, and it really uh, it was nice, nice to get that. Uh, in addition to you know, you gotta sell the tickets, see the see the bra, see the you know, but uh, right. it was there was also a lot of a uh, really clever uh, story. Well, you could tell that she was comfortable too. Yeah. You know, like this isn't something where if you want to do this, this is how you have to do it. Like you said, it wasn't exploited. No. You could tell that she was, you know, she had a good time. And that's something that's very important to us mm -hmm. is the fact that we could tell, you could tell when you watch a film if people are having a good time or not. And yeah. I, I, you could tell watching this film that you guys had fun. But like you said, there's layers to this film. Um, there's the horror elements that you get to explore. There's also a, a, a family element that's tied into it, you know, a mother's love, a, a, a Satan's love, if you will. Um, and, um, you know, the, a dad that doesn't know not to put peanut butter in the fridge. You know, there are all these different things <laughs> <laughs> that you can watch this movie and you can feel like you're listening to your mom and dad have a conversation on that phone as well. So, I mean, like, and when you can do something like that with somebody, when you can bring real life into it, th that's special, mm -hmm. you know, because obviously there's a lot of fiction that comes along with horror. But when you can... I feel like some seem more genuine and more real. Right. So um, what about you, Justin? Do you have anything coming up down the pipeline that you can actually uh, give us a little heads up about? Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, we just uh, shot like a principal photography on a, on a, a sci-fi uh, sci comedy um, that I'm really, really, I'm really excited about. So um, I'm not, yeah, I won't give too much away of it, but uh mm -hmm. But it's something, it was, it was definitely something that I really uh, felt passionate about, just like Sleepwalk Kill. So, so I'm hoping it turns out just as well. Well, I'm excited to check it out. And, um, I was waiting for Justin to say, yeah, I, I just uh, actually signed on for this new slasher being written by Bill. Uh, that'll be coming down. The <laughs> I've read so, part um, of it. Coming... It's great. <laughs> I do want to say again, thank you guys for taking the time out of your day to come out and hang out with us to talk about the film a little bit. And again, mm -hmm congratulations on making a movie yes. at the end of the day nobody could ever take this away from you guys you guys went out there you did it you did it successfully you made a film that we were very much enjoying until we couldn't anymore yeah, <laughs> which, uh, finish, yes, so. we, which we will eventually i yes. promise but um thank you guys for thinking of us and having us do this interview with you and the, the film's out now guys we've already finished it by now you can too by clicking the link down here in the description so uh bill justin don't go anywhere i got a couple more questions for you guys uh, but until next time, keep talking horror. Stay who you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Bye, guys.